Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Biolante. She is currently the most expensive release in the SH Monster Arts line and she is a Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive. Let's take a look and see whether or not you should add this plant into your Kaiju collection. The sculpt of Biolante is pretty much phenomenal. As you can tell with this general overview shot, there are a lot of small details that remind collectors that this creature is a freak hybrid between a rose and some Godzilla cells. If you look closely at this figure, you can see small vines all across the base of Biolante. You can see them upper sides. And you can even see them, somewhat so, on the thicker vines here. As I showed you there, a little bit. Turning her around to her back, specifically the area where the dorsal plates would be, it's sculpted very well too. And there are also these grooves all throughout her back that really convey this sense of foliage. Found all throughout Biolante are these little black spikes. They're very sharp, and chances are you could probably hurt yourself if you push too hard on them. Now let's go to her front again. Taking a look at her mouth, putting it up there, it's clear that all of the teeth are accounted for on the sculpt. And let's say she looks very, very mean. Now, the actual head of Biolante, it's sculpted very well, as is the neck, continuing this dorsal plate pattern all the way up to her neck, the top of her head, and going to the actual vines on Biolante. They're sculpted really well, no complaints, except for when we get to the mouth on each vine. Unfortunately, they are mostly bland. They're just a head with some teeth. Not really much can be done here, but it is what it is. The last feature of the sculpt of Biolante that I'll make mention of is the core here. It is made of a translucent plastic. It has this very wavy look, and the best comparison that I can make to it would probably be gelatin. Now, overall, Biolante is made of a very soft plastic, similar to the Monster Arts King Ghidorah, as you can see here as I play around with this sculpt piece here, and I'll get into a little bit more detail with that later. Now, the paint of Biolante. For the most part, overall, I don't really have too many issues with the paint. It looks great. Biolante actually looks dirty in some spots, to give her, you know, the idea that she just came bursting out of the ground. But there are a few, I would have to say, quality control issues that I'm not too fond of on a $230 action figure such as this. Let's give the first example here. Though the little black spikes are pretty cool to actually have, they're not painted too well, and to be honest, it kind of looks cheap. As you can even see on this particular one, it's not painted entirely. All of the black spikes are painted in this glossy paint, and it really clashes with the sort of dull paint with, that's found on the rest of Biolante, and they're really eye-catching. There's no subtle shading into it, it's just there, black, which is a bit of an issue for me. Also, a bit of an issue is the mouth. Mm-hmm. See if I'm gonna be able to actually get this well on camera. Now, overall, it's somewhat forgivable, but as you can see, some of the teeth on the inside, they're either missing spots of paint, or they're not painted entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them look clumpy, too, which I'm not a big fan of, but considering the small size of each tooth, and the fact that it may have been painted after assembly... Mm. Somewhat forgivable, but uh, the clumpiness, not too big of a fan there. Another issue which has plagued other Monster Arts releases, specifically those that are green, is that whenever there are these green highlights, I'm talking about right here, on a Monster Arts figure, it's a little bit overboard. And you can even see it down here too. I guess you would call that the lip area of Biolante? Yeah. Not a, not a big fan of that, but overall, I really do like the paint because there are some subtle transitions, 
such as this brown here, if you get the shadow out of the way, this brown here, here, it really does give this idea that Biolante is this plant creature and you really probably shouldn't mess with it. So aside from those issues, I'm a really, really big fan of the paint on Biolante and the sculpt, it's great. A lot of people probably think from promotional pictures or other in-hand pictures that, oh, Biolante is not wide enough. Trust me, when you get her in hand, you'll be able to tell that proportion-wise, she's just fine. So what exactly moves on Biolante and how does it move? Well, first off, let's go with the main jaw. It is on a hinge. And that's about as far as it can open. Yeah, one issue though with the hinge is that, as you can see, mine is not mm, exactly evened off. Yeah, I tried fixing it and it's just not going to happen. Oh well, I guess that's life. For the most part, I'll display her with her mouth open. Now, for the neck, here, 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 it is on a ball joint. Those each are ball joints. Move the neck up and down as I'm showing you here. Looking at it from the front, Biolante's neck can allow her to move from side to side and up and down as I showed you. In terms of twisting it, it can be done, but not too much movement there. Now, an interesting note is that this back piece here allows her to be shifted up, allowing for even more of an ability to look up, but then as you can see here, hello, you get that little bit of a gap there. Kind of unsightly, but personally, I'm not going to be using it too much. For her front, there is this little soft plastic plate that moves up and down along with her neck. Well, it moves up and down with her neck, but you actually have to move it. It's just on basic swivel joints, easy enough. So the neck of Biolante, pretty good. I would appreciate the ability to turn it more like this, but, you know, it is what it is. So the actual base of Biolante down here. What moves? Well, the base of each vine is on a swivel joint. Yes, that's pretty cool. And from here all the way throughout the rest of the vine, here, here, and same in the back, all ball joints. So you can get a lot of movement out of these pieces. Now you can pretty much get the vines to go into whatever pose you want. The mouths on each vine appear to be on small ball joints, which is pretty cool. They open and they close. And remember the soft plastic I told you about earlier? That's kind of where it comes into play on these vines. Like King Ghidorah, they pop out ever so easily. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. But if you heat them up and you pop them in, they should be fine enough. So overall, the articulation on Biolante really for her overall design it's fine enough there are just a few nitpicks here and there that i and probably other collectors including yourself would appreciate that biolante could have such as actually being able to turn the neck but what we get it's pretty good so what accessories does biolante come with Nothing. Kinda. Biolante doesn't actually come with any extras, but she does come with a gimmick. Biolante's gimmick is that she is able to light up, and she requires two LR44 batteries in order to do this, and when you put the batteries in, both of the plus sides need to be facing towards you. So there's a switch on the bottom of Biolante, as shown here, and you turn it one way and the other way to get the lighting feature to happen. So, for Biolante's lights, 
she comes with two different colors. Red or yellow amber. So the light up gimmick on Biolante, it's pretty neat. It's cool to draw attention, but realistically speaking, the red, it doesn't, I don't think, fit Biolante too well, and it's very, very bright. It's the better of the two, and the yellow amber one is very dim, and it's not really too noticeable unless you have the lights out. Also, they're just kind of there, lit up. They don't dim and then come back, or they don't flash. It's either on or off. Maybe that could be adjusted in some way, but I don't have the skills to do that. Instead of the light-up gimmick, I would have appreciated a beam effect part, but for what it is, the light-up gimmick, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to use it a lot, and as a matter of fact, after this review, I'm going to take the batteries out, so this way there's no leakage, which is a very real possibility, but I like the light-up gimmick. As a note, Biolante does not come with the batteries to activate the light-up gimmick. You have to buy them separately. So here is what I think a lot of people will be looking forward to. Exactly how big is Biolante? Well, as a general benchmark, here is the Monster Arts Godzilla. See right next to each other? Yep, Biolante is not, realistically speaking, in a pose that's somewhat film accurate. She's not too much taller compared to Godzilla. Now, there are other monsters in the SH Monster Arts line, and Biolante pretty much looks good next to all of them. For another size comparison, here's Space Godzilla. As you can see there, I think that's a nice sizing. I'm a fan of it myself. For a smaller monster, here's Little Godzilla. Yeah, Little Godzilla is pretty much a shrimp compared to Biolante. There's no question who would win that match. And then, as a size comparison, here is Biolante with the other large kaiju in the SH Monster Arts line. And finally, as some would like to know, here is a size comparison with the larger Burning Godzilla, or Godzilla 1995, alongside Biolante. So, as you can see, Biolante is definitely a large piece to enter into any collection, but she's not so large that she's going to take up way too much space in any collection. And luckily, the vines can be moved around and posed in different ways that you can condense her size down, which is what I do. So overall, in terms of the scaling for Biolante, I would say possibly a little bit bigger, but she's just fine enough for me. So, Biolante, get her right now, see if you can get a deal on her used, skip on her entirely, what should you do? Biolante commands a very high price point, $230 basically, and that is pretty steep for some collectors. At that price point, you would expect a literal perfect all-around figure in terms of paint, articulation, so on and so forth, and unfortunately, in terms of being flawless, Biolante can't deliver. But... That is not a reason to skip on this release at all. The sculpt on Biolante, quite frankly, it's one of the best I've seen in a while. It really makes me happy to have such an accurate Biolante. On top of that, there are some paint issues, but really, in the grand scheme of things, there can be a little bit of leeway given, considering the fact that aside from just some slop in the mouth and the very glossy black spikes, Biolante is painted absolutely beautifully. And the articulation? Biolante's design is a little bit restrictive, considering the fact that, you know, there's not too many moving parts on Biolante. But the actual vines that you get to play around with, you can have a lot of fun with. And you can even flip the actual base of the vines, so you can get a little bit more creative displays out of your Biolante. Overall, I have to say that $230? Mm, it's a bit of a stretch. I was able to pick up mine for 207 with a little bit of finagling here and there, and honestly, I do not regret my purchase at all. I am very happy to say that in terms of a 6-inch scale Biolante, 
If you're looking to pick up a, this fantastic kaiju in this format, do not be afraid to do so. You will not be disappointed. Biolante is an absolutely amazing start to the year 2014.